Hello and welcome back to the channel, How We Move the Decimal. In today's video, I am continuing to photograph tablecloths that I got from an online local auction. We have a local auction house that has two to four online auctions every month. Uh, I don't go to the in-person auctions as much because they are during times I can't go to, but I do like to go through the online auctions and go through their stuff. Um, the last couple auctions just haven't had anything that I need. Uh, but this, you know, I look to see. the uh, With this, I bought a large lot, which was two 35-gallon tubs full of tablecloths and dish towels. And I think even there was a couple sheets mixed up in there. I... Ended up not listing this sheet or this tablecloth because it was just too plain and average. It wasn't going to go for that much online. So I'm trying to pare down what I have to store. And if it doesn't sell for at least $15, I'm not wasting my time listing it. This is another one that was just a plain tablecloth. It didn't even have like any embellishments on it. So, and I couldn't get a good color reading on it with my camera. So, um, I actually ended up not listing this one either. It was just kind of a pain in the butt, to tell you the truth. So, um, the, well, there was a lot of low value things in there. And honestly, when you buy large lots at auctions, you get a lot of low value stuff. You get some garbage. I'm lucky enough that I can donate these items versus just throw them away. But even now we are having issues donating things in our area. A lot of places are just overrun with them. It is garage sale season is starting. Our first town rummage sales are next weekend. So they're just overwhelmed. One of the places I really like to donate has decided to um, put a fence around their donation door and not accept donations except when the fence is open. And they, when I talked to the people at the desk, they said it would be maybe once or twice a month. So here is the rest of the thing. So I mentioned that I'd already photograph some of these and I found the extras. This is me being frustrated and taking a minute to go, gosh darn it, I already photographed this as a lot, but this does go with it. And I found the um, washcloths that went or dishcloths that went with the pears and apples. So again, though, like the other ones, these are incredibly crisp. I don't think they were ever used. I would consider them dead stock that new dead stock. So the, they should go well, um, but I missed them with the other lot. So I'm going to have to puzzle piece the pictures together to get it. This is a slightly newer one. This is an early nineties pattern versus the other ones that were very 70s and the very 70s ones will sell better than the early 90s worst case scenario I have some new dish towels which I don't mind buying things that I can use things like this that can use upside they both had their tags still on them which was very nice and makes it easier for me when I list them because I can use the brand name in the listing which does help now this is, these two did not go with anything, but I'll sell them as a lot together. They're the dish towels that you hang like on your oven handle or your fridge door handle and they've got the buttons on them. They both still have their tags on and they were the same brand so it's easier for me and I'll just list them in a lot. The, the problem is I've listed nothing in a very long time. I've been very, very busy. So I'm just going through my photographs, but I do have, I think, four folders of photographs that I've taken that I can list, which is good. I just need the time to do that, and I, quite frankly, have been overwhelmed recently and just haven't got around to it. Um, but these, I'm getting rid of the ones and donating the ones that are useless. They are not staying in my house anymore, and that is one of the symptoms, side effects of a death pile. It's great having the death pile. Some people call them money piles. 
but there's oftentimes things in there that are not able to sell, they're ruined, they're useless, and you've been keeping them. I think I had two garbage bags of just tablecloths to donate. So that is two garbage bags that were taking up room in my garage that could be used for items that are useful, items that could be sold. I currently have a quite a large money pile, death pile, whatever you want to call it, that I need to go through. I go through and just pare down, look at, just taking the time to spread these out completely on my table and look for flaws is helping with that because I didn't have an area that I could spread them out with good lighting. Uh, as you can tell kind of in this video, there is a window right in front of the table and there is a large glass door to the side. So that is that brings a lot of light into the room. Our house is pretty dark, but this area brings a lot of light. This is a sheet that was in that. I think we just bought like these two tubs came from a closet buyout. So like this auctioneer likes to sell whole or partial closets. And this was a linen closet. I in the past have bought full bathroom closets. This was a linen closet that had like tablecloths and sheets and some hand towels in it. I don't think this was a linen closet in a bathroom. I think it was a linen closet in a hallway, but I did buy the top three shelves of the linen closet. And then that filled two 35 gallon tubs. And I bought the top three shelves for $5. I bought entire closets for less than $5. It just depends who's bidding. Sometimes towels in closets, if they have a lot of towels in them, go very high. The bottom part of that closet went very, very high because it had vintage soaps still in boxes and that can go very high. So that, that did go high on the bottom and I only got the top three, which apparently was majorly just tablecloths. This is a lace tablecloth, but it is a newer lace tablecloth. This is not a, a vintage lace tablecloth. This is very much machine made, very much mass produced tablecloth. This is not um, the thicker crocheted style lace. This is very, very thin. This was almost printed on lace. And that's not going to get as much as the old lace tablecloths, which they do get a lot. If you can find old lace veils, old lace dresses, tablecloths, window shears, all of that do very well, but they really need to be pre-1950s to sell very well. But um, it's pretty, again, for a smaller table. I consider that like a side table or like a sunroom table or something. Um, oh, the one of my children has decided to join me. Um, sorry, I blur out her face, but you see her pad moving along the table. Um, and now the cat's here. <laughs> the I can never get anything done. Um, I've switched days. So now I'm on the next day. The And I'm cold, so I'm wearing a bathrobe. But um, I'm these vintage sheets will go well. Obnoxious 1970s prints do very well. This is like mint and blue and like a powdered pink. They will do fine. I just need to get them listed. I could probably get $30 for this. Flat sheets do better than fitted sheets. Fitted sheets have the, they have the tendency to rot, especially vintage fitted sheets. I know in my house, I have no flat sheets because we only use the fitted sheets. But when selling vintage sheets, it's the flat sheets. And honestly, it might just be for the fabric at this point, uh, but fitted sheets do have the tendency to dry rot on the elastic. I always pull all the elastic pretty hard on vintage sheets. I pull it on vintage shorts. Um, anything that has elastic on it that's vintage, I will pull the elastic on it because I'm not gonna sell something with dry rot. The same with old shoes, you want to bend the soles really well to make sure they don't crumble and fall apart. I probably have previously told the story, but I had a very old pair of Pumas and they were pretty awesome. And 
I bought them at a rummage sale for $2. It was like an estate sale, but it was being run by the family. So it wasn't an official estate sale. It was more like a rummage sale. Bought them for $2. Brought them home, started bending them, and they straight up cracked in half. And then started falling apart in tiny pieces everywhere. They made such a big mess that... But if I had not done that and just sold them, then they would have crumbled on the person that bought them. And quite frankly, they probably would have crumbled in shipping if they got beat up in shipping. So always remember, check for dry rot. Check for dry rot in sheets, anything with elastic bands and shoes, all of that. We want to check for dry rot. Because if we don't check for dry rot, there's a chance that our customers will get something with dry rot in it. And it just, that's not nice. That's not nice to do. So always be aware of that. Always, you know, check for that. Same for smells and stains. Again, our table is obnoxiously large, but it's very nice to be able to spread whole sheets out, whole tablecloths out, check, measure everything. Uh, I bought some sheets recently and they were in like a grab bag and I couldn't look in it and they were cut up. And I didn't realize it. It was like a lot of vintage sheets and they had holes cut out of them or squares cut out of them. So they were used for something. Halloween costumes, quilting, I don't know. But obviously I can't sell those. The I did think about cutting them and making them fabric, um, selling it as fabric. Now I'm moving on to tub 83. When I'm photographing, I always write down the number and then I go through and um photograph the items so i photograph then write down the number photograph the number and then go through and photograph the items the uh, with this i'm on tub 83 but i don't have 83 tubs in my storage i think i have maybe 20 but I started with one and now I'm on 83, which is kind of terrifying if you think about it. And that's not even including hard good stuff and stuff that is heat sensitive that has to stay in our great room. This is just items. I've made it to tub 83. Um, the, and I do like to condense them and it's almost July. I know it's only April, but that is going to be very close to July. So it's almost time to do inventory again. And it's almost time to decide if we are um, going to have a rummage sale or not have a rummage sale. What's going on there? So we'll see. We'll probably end up having a rummage sale just because it's a way to get rid of items. Uh, last time we had a rummage sale, but it was mainly everything's free. Just take it. And people still didn't take it. And we still ended up having to donate and find some place to donate. Uh, again, it's just harder and harder to find places that donate. You have to hit that sweet spot when they're accepting donations. And, like, I've started following them on, like, certain stores on Facebook. Um, just to see. Because they'll post, like, we're accepting, currently accepting donations or currently not accepting donations. So I always try to do that. This pile is actually a pile of my children's clothing that they outgrew. Because kids tend to do that. I went through their closets and they outgrew a bunch of clothes. And quite frankly, they've outgrown more. I need to go through their closets more and pull out even more clothes. So, um, but a lot of these clothes I got at rummage sales my kids have worn them. Whatever I can get for them would be great. It's not a huge deal, and I have money invested in it. And quite frankly, my oldest is growing so fast, it's getting quite ridiculous. Things that fit him two weeks ago don't fit him now. Uh, my friend asked me, you know, how fast is he growing? And I said, thrift store only fast. So he is outgrowing clothes very, very quickly. So I will have more of his clothes to list. And now that he is wearing adult clothes, his clothes are selling better on eBay than my other two children's clothes that are still in children's sizes, um, especially my littlest clothes. A lot of them just get donated because they're, they don't sell well or I sell them as lots. But honestly, she just, she burns through them. She tears them up. They, they're not worth it to sell. 
I loved this little shirt. My youngest finally grew out of it. It's a Ralph Lauren jean shirt. Um, I just realized I forgot to take the, the front page photo of the jeans. But it's a Ralph Lauren jean shirt. I've had it since my son was little. I, you know, this has probably ex existed in my house for 10 or 11 years. And all three of my children have been through it. Not necessarily worn it. My son did wear it several times, but my daughters didn't. So, um, now we're back to the sheets. I don't know why it cut weird like this, but back to the vintage sheets. I don't know if these will sell well. They're from the 90s. They're very, very rose printed applique, not even printed well and kind of thin. I'm not sure how well they'll sell, but I will list them. Some person out there is really wanting these 1990s rose sheets but um we'll see what that we'll see how that goes thank you for watching my video please like and subscribe and have a wonderful day